Hello, my name is Dr Dan Hindley and I work as a community paediatrician in Bolton in Greater Manchester. This is the first of three e-lectures on community paediatrics and the lectures are based on questions from the extensive past test database. I really hope that these lectures will provide you with some insight into the sort of questions you can expect to have to answer on this aspect of paediatrics for MRC PCH Part 1. This lecture covers examples of questions about child development. The uh, learning objectives for this lecture are as follows. To uh, revise the key developmental milestones and domains, to understand the range of normal development, to recognise abnormal patterns of development, to be familiar with causes of developmental delay, to know when and how to investigate developmental delay, and to know about the multidisciplinary aspects of management for uh, developmental delay. Uh, as you'll probably uh, remember from your undergraduate days, development is difficult to revise uh, and difficult to keep in the front of your mind unless you're dealing with it on a regular basis. I would say that the key stages for developmental milestones are as follows. An infant of six weeks, a baby of four to six months, a baby of nine months, a baby of 12 months, a toddler of 18 months, and a young child of two years, three years, four years, and five years. The key domains to consider when thinking about child development and there are a number of different ways of thinking about this. I prefer the one proposed by Illingworth. Key domains are gross motor skills, manipulation skills, general understanding, speech, and sphincter control stroke miscellaneous. Question one. A normal six-month-old baby should A. Hold an object between finger and thumb, B. Have progressed beyond palmer grasp. C. Lost moro reflex. D. Roll over from front to back position. E. Show hand dominance. When we consider this question, this is uh, looking at what a normal child should be doing. This is a typical MRC PCH question on child development. And uh, as you'll know, a normal six-month-old baby should be able to roll over from front to back and readily follow objects with their eyes, use a good palmer grasp, and transfer objects from hand to hand. Babies of this age would also recognise parental voices and babble and laugh. Pincer grip is usually not seen at this age, but from about nine months of age and the moro reflex is present from birth and persists till about three or four months, and it's abnormal for the moro reflex to persist beyond this stage. And if it does, motor delay should be considered. Hand dominance is unlikely before the age of 18 months, and if there is early hand dominance, then this should an alert a clinician to um, possible brachial plexus injuries or hemiparesis. So the answers to this slide are A equals false, B equals false, C equals true, D is true, E equals false. Question two. This is a similar slide. The average one-year-old child A can pick up a hundred and thousands with an accurate pincer grasp. B can walk unaided, C can talk in sentences, D can understand the concept of object permanence, E will have been vaccinated with the MMR, that's the measles, mumps and rubella vaccine. At the age of one year, children should have developed an accurate pincer grip and to be able to see and coordinate and manipulate small objects such as the classic hundred and thousands. Gross motor development varies 
that the average one-year-old should be able to stand and cruise, but not necessarily walk unaided. The average one-year-old will have developed object permanence. It is important that you know the UK vaccine schedule. This changes very frequently and it's important to keep up to date. Currently, the Hib and Men-C booster is given at 12 months and the MMR is given with a pneumococcal booster at 13 months. So, the answers to this question are A equals true, B equals false, C equals false, D equals true, E equals false. Question 3. Which of the following would imply the need for developmental assessment in a two-year-old child? A. Still only able to go upstairs two feet per step. B. Inability to match three or four primary colours. C. No intelligible words. D. Failure to make a three-block tower. E. Bedwetting. This is a slightly different sort of question, asking about red flags which would suggest the need for a more detailed developmental assessment. It is normal to go upstairs alone and down holding on two feet per step at two years. Children can normally name one colour at three years, two or three at four years, and four colours at five years. A two-year-old would be expected to build a tower of six or seven cubes A three-year-old copies a circle with a pencil and imitates a cross. They would copy a cross at four years and a square at five years. Bedwetting is obviously not abnormal at this age. So the answers to this question are A is false, B is false, C is true, D is true, and E is false. Question 4. A 48-month-old child should be able to A. Copy a cross shape B. Dress with supervision C. Name ten colours D. Draw a six-part man E. Talk in clear sentences So this concerns the developmental achievements of a normal four-year-old child we've discussed some of these in the last question a four-year-old child may well be able to name a few colours and um, to draw a basic man with head, limbs and sometimes maybe a body a four-year-old child would normally be able to dress with supervision and talk in clear sentences you'll be familiar with the good enough draw a man test which starts from around the age of three. So the answers to this question are A is true, B is true, C is false, D is false, and E is true. Question five. A child should be investigated further if they are not A. Sitting unsupported by six months of age, B smiling by four weeks of age C. walking alone at 12 months of age D. saying single words with meaning by 18 months E. dry at night by three years of age This question is not asking about the range of normal it's asking about when investigations should be instigated A six-month-old child would be expected to pull to sit and to stay sitting momentarily but not to sit unsupported for any length of time. Smiling often occurs by six weeks of age, often before that but we wouldn't be concerned uh, until about eight weeks of age at least. Walking occurs any time from 12 to 18 months. The failure of children to say single words at 21 months should raise concern, but there is wide variation with girls speaking generally before boys, and two-year-olds can vary considerably, some only having a few words and others having a vocabulary of up to 2,000 words. 
Children are usually expected to be dry by day at the age of two years and dry by night at the age of three years. However, 10% of five-year-olds and 5% of ten-year-olds will still wet at night. So the answers to this question are A is false, B is false, C is false, D is false, and E is also false. Question 6. In an otherwise well child, which of the following are indicators of possible language delay? A. No single words by 18 months of age. B. A family history of hereditary deafness. C. Failure to construct two word phrases by 30 months. D. No repetitive babble by 8 months of age. E. Echolalia at the age of two years. Most infants will be vocalising tunefully by the age of four months and using strings of repetitive same sound syllables, for example, agagaga or da da da, from seven to eight months of age. But there is a range of normal behaviour and most referral guidelines suggest 10 to 12 months as an upper limit for babbling. Monotonous or limited vocalisation after 9 to 10 months should arouse suspicion of deafness. Echolalia, which is repeating phrases others have used, is common at 2 years of age. And the failure of children to say single words by 18 months should raise concern. A child with a family history of deafness should be screened during early childhood. And in fact, most babies are now screened in the neonatal period on the Universal screening, Hearing Screening Programme. There should be a hearing test performed whenever parents express concerns regarding their child's ability to hear properly. So the answers for this question are A is true, B is true, C is true, D is false, and E is false. Question 7. Children should be referred for a hearing test. A. If there's no intelligible speech by three years. B. If there are no single words by the age of 18 months. C. If there is parental concern regarding the child's hearing. D. Following bacterial meningitis. E. If there is a strong family history of deafness. Uh, as we mentioned in the previous slide, children should be referred for a hearing test if there is parental concern regarding the child's hearing. All children who have had bacterial meningitis or were suspected of having bacterial meningitis should be referred for audiolog audiological assessment, as should ch children where there is a strong family history of deafness. Other indications for re referral include no intelligible speech at, uh, by, by four years and no single words by the age of 21 months. So the answers for this question are a is false, B is false, C is true, D is true, E is true. Question 8. Causes of developmental regression typically presenting beyond the age of two years include A. Hypothyroidism B. HIV encephalopathy C. Subacute sclerosing panencephalitis D. Mitochondrial disorders, E. Amino acid urias. It's always important to look out for loss of already acquired skills when taking a developmental history. Recognised causes of developmental regression beyond the age of two years are many and include subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, very rare in developed countries following the introduction of effective measles immunisation. Also, other acquired CNS infection, including HIV and prion disease, leukodystrophies, Wilson's disease, other neuronal storage and mitochondrial disorders. Developmental regression before the age of two years is typically seen in hypothyroidism, amino acid urias, 
and some of the lysosomal storage disorders, including certain of the mucopolysaccharidoses. So the answers to this question are A is false, B is false, C is true, D is true, and E is false. So those are the eight example questions for this lecture. The key learning points for this lecture are that there is a wide range of normal in child development. And it's very important to know what is normal and what is not. It is very helpful to carry a snapshot of average achievement at key ages, as mentioned at the start of this lecture. Early recognition of significant developmental problems is vital and identification of causes of developmental delay by appropriate investigation allows a tailored management plan. I would suggest uh, that uh, Illingworth's textbooks regarding um, the normal child and uh, normal and abnormal child development are very good sources of information on this subject. This is the end of the first lecture on community paediatrics. Lecture 2 covers child protection and Lecture 3 covers immunisation and public health issues. Good luck in your work.